So, you, you bought an electric car. You thought you were doing something good, didn't you? Reducing emissions, enjoying that sweet, sweet instant torque, never having to smell gasoline on your hands again. Oh, you sweet, naive child. Don't you know about the long tailpipe? The long tailpipe, the diabolical secret that all EV owners ignore? Look how long this sucker is. Goes through the charming all the way over to here. This thing is just crazy long. The theory is simple and therefore perfect for people who don't like to think too hard. It goes like this. Your EV isn't really zero emissions. No, no, no. You've just moved the tailpipe from here to over there. Every time you plug in, a baby penguin sheds a single cold dust filled tear. You're not saving the planet. You're just outsourcing the filth. It's a brilliant, airtight argument. Wrong. It's bunk. And today we're blasting that bunk straight into the stratosphere. Sorry, stratosphere. Okay, let's give the myth peddlers a participation trophy. Yay! Is there a power plant somewhere that generates the electricity used in your car? Yes, unless your house and your area is 100% solar, yes. So congratulations, you've grasped the basics of how a power grid actually works. Congratulations. But the idea that this is a simple one-to-one -one swap of pollution is where the logic takes a nosedive into a pool of total and utter nonsense. Mark P. Mills, executive director of the National Center for Energy Analytics, sounds like he's a very important person, right? Well, he is still spreading the long tailpipe bunk like a kindergartner at a peanut butter party in a giant room full of bread with no adult supervision. His moronic argument is laughable for anyone with a working brain, but I digress. Let's think about this. An internal combustion engine is a tiny, inefficient, hot, vibrating metal box that has to work in every condition imaginable with minimal oversight. It's basically controlled explosions happening thousands of times of a minute, just a few inches from your legs. It barfs out CO2 like a honeybee barfs out honey into a hive. Not only that, the CO2 that it takes to Drill, move, refine, and deliver that gasoline to your car is off the chain. And I've done a video about that. I'll have a link below for you so you don't have to take my word for it. You can go back and take my word for it. But more on that later. A power plant, on the other hand, is a massive, multi-billion dollar facility that is designed to do one thing. Generate electricity as efficiently as humanly possible. It operates under stable conditions and is subject to stringent federal regulations with things like industrial scale scrubbers and filters. Not to mention almost 40% of the electricity in the USA is made with zero carbon sources like nuclear, wind, solar, and hydro. Another 40% is made with natural gas, which is four to five times cleaner than any petroleum that you can burn anywhere on the face of this earth, and much cleaner than coal. Saying that your car engine is a small version of a power plant is like saying your garden hose is a smaller version of the Hoover Dam. Now, one is a highly regulated marvel of engineering, while the other, it's just not. Here's the part.
part of the long tailpipe, truthers conveniently forget the grid is changing drastically. That long tailpipe that they're so proud of, it's getting shorter and cleaner every single day. Every new solar farm and every new wind turbine that goes online means electricity is getting cleaner. My EV is literally cleaner today than it was a year ago. And I haven't done a single thing except plug it in. And next year, cleaner. And the year after that, cleaner. And the year after that one, cleaner. Well, you get the picture. Can you say the same thing about your gas guzzler? Is your gasoline magically getting greener? Did Chevron start mixing special unicorn pea and purple pixie dust into their gasoline mix? No, it's still 100% refined dinosaur goo, and it will be forever. I can hear the keyboard warriors warming up already. Dinosaur goo? Do you really think that petroleum is dinosaur goo? No, I'm just trying to make a point here. If you took that seriously, I bet you think that my EV makes as much CO2 as your carbon belching poser car. In fact, some genius made the comment in my previous video with the absolutely stupid claim that if we stopped burning oil in all cars tomorrow, we would only reduce CO2 emissions by 10% worldwide. That's yet another asserted conclusion from an armchair warrior living in his mommy's basement with no clue about reality. I'll take that on in a future video, but suffice it to say, for now, that that has been taken on and disproven more times than a psychic predicts the winning lottery numbers. And it's just about as accurate. And did you know that there's a gasoline fairy who makes gasoline magically appear at your local gas station? Those who support the internal combustion engine believe that with the fervor of a three-year-old sitting in Santa's lap. And this might be the most galaxy-brained part of their entire long tailpipe myth. It pretends gasoline just appears at the pump by magic. It conveniently ignores the colossal amount of energy and the plume of emissions it takes to explore for oil, drill it out of the ground, ship it halfway across the planet on a smoke belching tanker, and then cook it at insane temperatures in a refinery, a facility by the way, th that often makes nearby power plant look like a pristine health spa. That, my friends, is gasoline's actual long, dirty, and conveniently ignored tailpipe the tailpipe that actually comes before you even burn a single drop of gasoline in your internal combustion engine car. It's very convenient how the gas-breathing, coal-rolling, CO2-puking cronies always overlook that part of the equation. So let's recap the bunk we just busted. Number one, centralized power plants are vastly more efficient at converting fuel to energy than the billions of tiny internal combustion engines in cars around the world. And two, the electric grid is getting greener every single day, making my EV's carbon footprint smaller over time. A gas car's footprint can never change because the physics of burning gasoline will never change. And three, getting gasoline to the pump is a filthy and energy intensive process that gets a free pass in the fairy tale argument. Even in the absolute worst case of plugging in an EV to a coal fired power plant, the EV will have cleaner tailpipe emissions than the gasoline car, period. There's nothing you can do to change the laws of physics in that case. 
argue until you've turned blue like this tape, but it's not going to change it. So go ahead and smoke on that. The next time your Uncle Dave, who smells like used motor oil and dead fish, hits you with that long tailpipe gotcha at the family barbecue, just smile and nod and ask him how much CO2 his favorite refinery barfed out today. What other EV bunk would you like me to blast? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more on-time, fact-based EV information. Oh, and for the keyboard warrior who's about ready to make a snarky comment about you didn't give us any numbers. Where are your numbers? You're just making conclusions. Well, I've done several videos about this in the past where I've provided plenty of numbers, and the links to those videos are in the description below. So please take your time, Keyboard Warrior, to go review those videos before you blow your mind typing those 300 characters that you're going to put in this comment section. Please do yourself a favor. Until next time, I'll see you out there or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. And remember, watch out because blasting bunk is a dirty job and the flakes tend to go in all directions. See you later, my friends. Oh, and don't forget your participation trophy. You were half right. See you later.